Well, here we are, folks, with Jim Sherlock. He was a Springer security guard for many years, uh, starting in Chicago. And I just wanted to know, how did you get the job? Hey, Mark. Nice meeting you. Thank, thanks for um, bringing me aboard here. Uh, how did I get the job? Great story. It, it actually is. Um, Steve and I were friends. Steve Wilkos and I were friends and uh, you know, on the job, on, on the Chicago police job. And we were both working a side job together at uh, Baja Beach Club. It was a, a bar in Chicago, and it was right across the street from the NBC Towers. And uh, Steve and I were hanging out all night. And then at the last second, he's like, hey, uh, you got anything going on tomorrow? I, he goes, I need some help at, uh, at a show. And he didn't even say Jerry Springer show. He just said, I need some help across the street at NBC Towers. You know, be here at noon. Be there at noon. And I just so happened to be off the next day. It was my regular day off of work. So I told Steve, yeah, you know, I'm young copper. And we always work side jobs when we can. So I showed up there and I, I literally thought I was going to be building security for a TV show taping, either by the front door, by the backstage. I had no idea what I was going to do. As soon as I got there, they rushed me through. They put me in the front row. And this, we weren't filming yet because I was there from day one. This is when they did the transition from the Phil Donahue like talk show to the Jerry Springer show, which Richard Dominic, you know, thought of. So I was, I was there. I don't, I, I, they had the camera crews there, but they were trying to work out the kinks, exactly what they wanted to do. So they put me in the front row. Steve's like, just watch our, I haven't even met Richard Dominic yet. And I'm literally sitting down and Steve's like, just watch Richard Dominic. He's over by the podium. He's the boss. If he tells you to get up, get up, if he tells you to sit down, sit down. It was me. I think Dan Puhar, Dave Johnson, Michael Michael Connor, and and Steve, we were all there together. And I'm still sitting down, Mark. I have no idea what I'm, what I'm doing. I don't even know what's going to happen on stage. So I'm sitting there, and they bring out a couple, you know, a couple good old boys up there, and they have an argument, and all of a sudden they start fighting. And then I'm looking at Steve. I'm looking at Richard, like, what the hell is going on here? And then you know, Steve jumped up first. He got in between them. He broke them up. And then I'm like looking at Richard. Richard's like, what are you doing? Get up there! I'm like. I didn't know. So, so that, that's the way it kind of started for me. And I think that I don't think that first one was uh, was actually taped. I think it was all it was all like uh, preseason. Like they were they just wanted to get this thing going. And then uh, I went in the office later. I met Richard. Um, I met a bunch of the producers. I, I already knew Steve. I already knew the other security guys, all great guys. And we were all sitting in Richard Dominic's office. And he he basically said, welcome aboard. He goes, this is a Jerry Springer show. And I'm like, oh, okay. I, am I here again tomorrow? He's like, yeah, yeah, you're here every show. So then 15 years later, I stopped working there. I, I worked every just about every show from, I think it was 93 or 94, all the way to 09, I think, when they left. So it was a, it was a long run, and it was, it was great. Wow. That's an amazing story. I mean, you yeah. know, you just take a security job, and it's like it turns into this, you know, show that's, I think at one time was one of the most popular shows on television. Yes, it was. I remember I, I did a lot of a lot of uh, traveling with Jerry. Um, the the late nineties when the show was just you know just peaking at it, at its at the highest level. We we were going to a lot of different colleges. They would have Jerry. You know, we went to Ohio State and went to Flo uh, some school down in Florida. And the way you know he would just walk into an auditorium and the place would just explode. People just loved him. I was there, you know, for security, but he didn't need security. I was just really there just for hanging out with him and enjoying everything that was going on. Because for those of, for those of the people that are on your site, if they don't know that about Jerry, Jerry loved it. He loved it. Like when he went to, he he loved going out of his way to uh, to hang out with people. He, he really did. He just, he loved it. He was, he was so nice to everybody. You know, it was just, it was fun being with him. But uh, yeah, he he. That, I think the show top at number one. They beat. It was a big deal one year. We went into Richard's office. We had a cigar and uh, oh, we didn't have a cigar. We weren't supposed to smoke in his office, so we didn't have a cigar. We had a glass of bourbon, and then we celebrated because he he uh, Jerry overtook Oprah for not the number one show in the country. That is fantastic. What year was that when he finally reached that moment? I think it was like ninety eight or ninety nine or, or two thousand. It was at the end of the nineties, beginning of two thousands. That's when it. Uh, when, it, when it started in 94, you know, the first couple of years, it was just gaining traction. People were just starting to find out about it. So it was probably about 98, 99 is when it, when it hit its peak. That's insane to me because that was the year I was born, 94. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, time is time is flying by. But uh, 
those were some great times. They really were. They were. Um, St- Steve did most of the traveling with Jerry at first, but then when Steve got pretty big, uh, you know, he was doing his own thing. He was he was you know out meeting people, you know, shaking hands. So I'm the one that took over then to be Jerry's right hand man uh, with traveling with him and things like that. I got to know him really well, and you know, I was able to be able to call him a, a friend. You know, we, we uh, like I said, he didn't really need security. I was really there just to hang out with him and keep him keep him company. There's a great photo that I posted on the page today of you and Jerry asleep in the back of a limo, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, that was Linda Schaffron, the publicist. Uh, we had a long night. Well, it was actually a long day and then a long night. And then we got picked up real early in the morning. We're heading to, we, that was in New York, and we were heading to uh, heading to the airport. <laughs> well, I guess we both, I don't remember falling asleep, but I do remember seeing that photo about a, about a week later. It was it was posted in all over our office and and uh what Linda did is and it was an eight by ten she had developed and then um she posted crack security <laughs> on top of it and she put it all over the office. You know, I'm like that's great. And I really didn't remember sleeping. I remember getting in the car and then just getting out of the car at the airport. I don't even remember that part. But Linda made sure I didn't forget. And Linda follows the page. So she she likes everything that I post. Yeah, she's she's wonderful. She really is. She's hardest working lady in television. And that's saying a lot because those producers at uh, at the Springer show, everywhere from Richard Dominic to Rochelle to, you know, Carrie, every all those producers worked their tails off, man. That was not a 40 hour a week job. They 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 worked real hard. Well, what was the wildest moment that you can remember on the show? Like be it a fight or a guest specifically that sticks out in your mind? Uh, you know what? There, there were so many. The craziest part was this was at the peak. So it was the late 90s. Um, I was breaking a fight up and there were two large women, very large. Be it, saying obese would be would be nice. They were, they were both large. They were, they were both sweethearts, too. I, got, I usually talk to people before the show and after the show. They were both really nice. But, man, they were going at it. And one of them fell on me. And the camera guy was on stage. He got a great shot of it. And I mean, I, I lost my breath, you know, for a second. And I guess Richard being Richard, he doesn't, he doesn't miss anything. He saw the way that looked. And then when that show was over, he pulled me aside. He goes, we're doing that for now on. He goes, I want you, when, when these women, these large people, when they fall down, I want them falling on top of you. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> like, so I, I went for, it probably was about a good month. Until, you know, it's, it's, it's just Richard so smart that, that it was happening for about a month and then we moved on to something else. But, you know, and, and, and they didn't, the ladies didn't know that. But, we, you know, we're breaking them up. I had to find a way to make it look like we just fell so that, you know, they were, they're trying to fight each other and I'm behind them, pulling them. And then a, a few times I was pulling them, pulling them, pulling them. And then, you know, they just, they just fell on top of me. I, I wasn't trying, but they did. And then Richard just kept saying, I love it. I love it. That's great TV. Like, holy cow. But uh, it, they, and, and every time the women fell on me, I was wearing a mic. So they, they were saying, oh, are you okay? I'm like, don't say that. <laughs> we don't want that. Don't say that. I'm all right. As I was trying to catch my, you know, catch my wind. But That's funny. the craziest show, Mark, is um, it's a long, long story. I, I, I don't want to mess it up because it, it's so long. But here's the gist of it. I would always know. Mark, can you see me? Yes, I okay. Can. Mm-hmm. All right. my, my fo- for some reason, my my uh, the photo or the camera went away. So I would always get there early, and I would meet with the guests. I introduce myself, meet with them, and you know we'd go and I'd go talk to Richard and talk to Jerry. Uh, always, so I always had an idea of what was happening, and I and I knew the formula. I I knew it better than well, all all the security guys. We all knew the formula, you know, because um, the the producers would always fill me in on what's going on in the show. You know, if they gave this guy 10 Red Bulls or if they gave him five Red Bulls, you know, they would let us know because it, it, it got crazy sometimes, as you know. So this this one particular show, I got there late. I, I, I got there and I sat down and literally I ran into the studio and I sat down right when they were starting. And actually, somebody was filling in my seat. They had to get up and they, they left and I sat down. And the first guest, I mean, these were – these were young people in their early 20s and good looking people. And they're from Chicago. The whole group's from Chicago. And they were at, at the first, the first, the first clip was like, you know, it was all about a wedding. It was about a woman getting married to a guy and then something went wrong before the wedding. 
You know, it's a big secret. So I'm like, hmm. And, but these people to me, they look like they didn't belong on the Springer show. They really. So I go backstage and I'm being curious and I'm asking one of the guys, I'm like, hey, where are you guys from? And they're like, oh, we're right from the northwest side of Chicago. My my dad's a fireman and, you know, this guy's a fire, Chicago fireman. So I'm like, oh, you guys are all from Chicago. What's going on? I, I don't know, man, but it's some kind of a secret. You know, this is all bullshit. We know that it's all bullshit. So we're just going to have a good old time here. And I'm thinking, there's something wrong here. There's a story here. They all think it's bullshit, but it's a real story. It turned out it was a real story. It was the woman is getting, mar uh, getting married to you know, her fiancé, and the fiancé the fiance has, a, has a bachelorette party. They have a stripper comes to the bachelorette party, and she hooks up with the, with the fiancé. They hook up. Well, the best man sees that. He tells the bride, and then they hook up for the wedding. It was freaking nuts. So then, you know, I think there used to be six segments. Like in segment five, the, 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 they never got married, but the, 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 uh, the woman says to, the, to her, her would-be husband, she's like, did you have a bachelor party? And he goes, no, I didn't. I didn't have a bachelor party. She goes, you didn't? And they bring the stripper out. <laughs> the, a real, I mean, they bring her out, and I'm in the front row. I'm looking at Steve. And I don't, I don't know if Pete and Jay, Jason were there yet. It was right at the cusp, right before they started. But the three of us looked at each other. And we were like, "Be ready," because these guys are all in their mid twenties. You know, and if they're going to fight, they're going to fight. You know, they don't care what the producer said. So I'm like, "Uh oh, here we go." So the the stripper comes out. The stripper admits that that the stripper, you know, gave the um, uh, gave the would be groom a little, you know, enjoyment at the bachelor party, and then um. But in the last segment, the, the best man comes out and they say that they're having an affair now. So they, obviously they called the wedding off, but the fight that broke out was ridiculous because the, the other guy's buddies were all there all saying, this is all bullshit. This is all bullshit. Everyone was fighting and they were, they, they, they were going at it. And the show, unfortunately, never aired. Wow. Because uh, it never aired because they wouldn't, they wouldn't sign off on it at the end of it because they, they were embarrassed. And it probably would have been one of the best shows, uh, except for there was a couple punches that really landed hard. Uh, but when it was over, though, they, we got him out and nobody got hurt, you know, which was really good. And I think Richard Dominic was really upset that he couldn't use that one because they all were going crazy. They, the only two people that knew it was real was, was the uh, the bride and the best man. They were that was it. They told everyone else it was just it was a made up story. We're gonna go have we're gonna go have fun on the Springer show. That is the craziest thing I ever heard. <laughs> yeah, that was that was nuts. It was, and I just remember looking at Steve, going, "Oh man, this is going to go up. This is this is going to go up." You know, and it's a serious thing, man. They had a call for a wedding. Or, I, I mean, in this northwest side of Chicago, they're from the Edison Park area, which is a beautiful neighborhood that it, it just just north and west of Chicago, downtown Chicago. So uh, I, I knew as soon as they said where they were from, I'm like, ah, this is. I think one of the producers pulled a quick one here, and they did. But unfortunately, it wasn't able to air. And the craziest show I did, Mark, I don't know if you ever heard the uh, the horse show with yes. the guy marrying his horse. Oh, well, yeah. it was it was me that went down to Joplin, Missouri. Richard pulled me aside. I go down and I, I forget which producer it was, but I go down to Joplin, Missouri, because Richard tells me, "Listen, we're not wasting money bringing a freaking horse up here to Chicago, and that's bullshit. I want to make sure it's real." So. I'm like, right, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to make sure it's real? He goes, just go down there and, and, and it, you know, just make sure it's real. So I go down there with one of the producers, and um, it, it's in Joplin, Missouri, but it was like 45 minutes outside Joplin. Now, Joplin's small, and we're going out to the country. It, it was, it was you know, it was pretty crazy where we were going. And I think that was before the phones and all that, so we had to, you know, had to get the map out. So we go out, to, it was a trailer, and the trailer had like a, a handicap ramp, but that was for the horse. And we walked into this trailer, and you can, the horse lived in the trailer with the guy. You can tell they just didn't set it up recently. It's been like that for a long time. And then, of course, I said, uh, How can you guys prove to me that you're married? And he starts unzipping his pants. <laughs> no, <laughs> right in front of me. Yeah. And I go, Whoa, 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 whoa. Man, I, all right. I believe you. I believe you. I go, So then the producer, she was really good. She talked to the guy trying to trip him up about, you know, we got you, this, is this real? Is this real? The guy got up, the guy had papers. They had pictures of their wedding. 
with other people that marry animals. There's a there's a name for them. And and he has this whole subculture of people that marry that either have sex with animals or are married animals. It was absolutely insane. So he came up and they they, they I think the show only aired in a few states. I, I th and I think some states refused to show it because then on the same show there was a woman that was married to a German shepherd. You know, I'm not married, but having a relationship with her German shepherd. That's some some sick people. But uh, you know, it's it wasn't always fights. Sometimes they had the crazy shit on, crazy shit on there too. Yeah, I remember the horse one. The guy had like a pair of wraparound sunglasses. I, was that yeah. to conceal his identity or something? Like no, no. I, I, well, that's a great question, Mark. But when I got there in Joplin, he was wearing them. So he, he might have some kind of a sensitivity to sun or something like, or lights because he had them on down in Joplin as well. So I, maybe he was trying to hide his you know identity, but um, no, backstage he had them off. So I, but maybe on the stage he, he didn't want people to see him on on TV. But he had no problem talking about it. So just another yeah, crazy yeah. show. <laughs> it takes all kinds. That's what I've always been told. Yeah, yeah. it does. <laughs> It and, you does. know, I feel like at that time, had it not been for the Springer show, most of, you know, average citizens would not have known that people like that were even out there. No, I, I, I'm one of them. I mean, I, for a couple of years, uh, Richard wanted us to travel with the producers before, because they got burned a few times by paying for people to come to Chicago. And when they got here, they weren't what they were, what they were supposed to be like on the phone. Like the producers do a hell of a job on a telephone trying to prep them, like, you know, what's going to happen. And then when they get to Chicago, it doesn't work out. So they were they were losing some money with, in travel, then because the people are coming to Chicago and we're sending them right back home, you know. So what Richard was doing for a couple of years was is, is if there was a good story, he wanted one of the security guys to travel with the producer to wherever they are, and just to legit, you know see if this verify the story. So that's when I got to look at some of these places in Ohio and Michigan, in in Mississippi. Um, uh, pretty rough living really is i mean we were in some we we're in some real sketchy uh backwoods places and um you know i did it for two years mark i never had one problem though no, not one problem as soon as people find out we were from the jerry springer show they just rolled the red re rolled the red carpet out for us they just loved it all they wanted to do was they, they'd go to me there i was known as the other guy because i you know everybody knew steve when we first started so i was they're like, you're not Steve, you're the other guy. So then that was my name on the show. I was, you know, hey, the hey, other guy, how you doing? So uh, but it was, it was, it was, it was rough. I mean, not rough, but it was it, it opened my eyes up to what that part of America looks like. Well, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um yeah. definitely, you know, shows you that, you know, maybe you're privileged in some type of a way to be able to have been born into the family that you were and not born into a situation like that. I mean, it's only yeah. uh, you know, through the grace of a higher power or something like that, that we're not just like them, you know, just yeah, love you know, it, genetics. You know what, though, Mark? They think they had it better than we did. They, they hated the city. When, when they would come to Chicago, they hated it. You know, they, they would like being in a hotel at first, be able to watch TV. They, they would give them money to watch cable TV back then. You know, you had to pay extra for it in your hotel room. But they basically, they, they didn't like being up here. They, they thought they had it made where they were living. They loved it. So... Obviously, I hate saying all people, but most of the people that I dealt with, when they came to Chicago, they didn't like the crowds, you know, how busy everything was. They didn't like that. So it's just where you grow up. I, yeah, I, I grew up in the South myself, um, but I oh, moved to D.C. So I'm in D.C. now. Oh, okay. Um, so I've gotten the best of both worlds, but I never lived in an area. I still grew up in the suburbs, even down South. Yeah. I was never in the backwoods country. I mean, I know people like that, but I never yeah. grew up in that myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Different kind of folks, different kind of folks. Yeah, like I said, though, all those years, I never had one problem. I mean, it's, I, it, I don't think I would have had a problem anyway, but as soon as they saw it, the shirt you got on now, I'd, you know, I'd be wearing that shirt, and it's like I always made sure I had to, um, like Richard, it was Richard's idea, I'd bring a bag full of those shirts just in case people were not nice. You know, you give that shirt out, and all of a sudden now they're nice to you. because they, they, Those things were like gold for people. They yeah. all wanted that shirt. You know, I'd go down to, you know, like Joplin, Missouri, and I had a bag full of shirts and everyone was just grabbing them. You know, but this is for them, it was super cool. You know, that, that was cool. It was cool to watch it too. They were really excited. Yeah. Pete actually gave me this when I came to the show. And so that's, I, I feel the same way. It's like gold to me too. I wouldn't part with it yeah. or anything. And yeah. someone asked me recently, I actually wore it to work and they said, uh, you know, where can I get one of those? I said, good luck finding them now. I said, yeah, you can't so. find them on the internet. 
You know, I think I think Mark, I think for one year we wore the bowling shirts. You know, I had a collar and it said Jerry Springer Security. And I had maybe about 15 of them after the after the show went in, in Chicago. And I would always, people always were asking for stuff. You know, if hey, you got you got one of those shirts, and I started giving them away, giving them away, giving them away, giving them away. And then somebody asked me for a bowling shirt. I went back in my collection, in my bin. I didn't have any more. I'm like, oh, I didn't even keep one for myself, you know. <laughs> and I probably I probably had a hundred of those shirts. I might, I might have three now. Wow. Just just giving them out over the years, you know. And it just yeah, you know, I like to see people get happy. You know, they're happy for it. So uh, I I lived it. So if I can give somebody a T-shirt from the Springer Show, man, it's cool. Yeah, I saw uh, I saw you wearing that. I saw I think it was Entertainment Tonight when Jerry passed. You and uh, Dave and uh, who's the other guy? That was uh, the Jerry. other Jimmy? We're in the oh, interview okay. talking about Jerry Johnson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, him passing away. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I was going to ask too. Um, there was an I just came across a show very recently. One of the I think this was from like 1998. And it was a pimp on there, and he smacks his uh, smacks his his the prostitute that he you know was involved with across the face. And I mean, you immediately, I mean, you jumped on that guy immediately and like threw him backstage when that happened. And I know it didn't happen often, at least not from the audience's perspective. But when that did happen, say a guy like put hands on a woman on stage, when you guys took him backstage, was there some like serious consequences they had to pay for doing that? Yes. Um, Richard's biggest, you know, Richard was tough. He was tough because, uh, you know, that's his production. He's in charge. So Richard had a whole bunch of rules, not just for us, for everybody, for producers, for Todd, you know, the stage manager. So his number one rule is that women can't be hit. They can't, they cannot be hit unless it's two women fighting each other. And then, but if a guy hits a woman, take care of it, right? Forget what I said, me and Richard, forget what I said about not putting your hands on somebody, get up there as fast as you can. And then when you take him off the stage, make sure he knows about it. He's not going to do it again. So then Richard would leave it up to like me and Pete and Steve or Steve wasn't really getting involved at this time. But, you know, you know, say, say Pete and I are working a show. Somebody puts their hands on a woman. We drag him off the stage. We get in his face behind stage. You know, it, and we're not faking it. It's real because it would piss us off when we see that happening because we, we would tell him ahead of the show. These are the rules. And then do not. So most of the time we didn't think they were going to hit the women, but we always said it just in case. We said if you hit a woman. You know, you're going to get your ass kicked backstage. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. That's what's going to happen. And there's no cameras back there. So we would tell him that. And it, it very rarely happened. But I remember the show you were talking about. I threw him off the stage. And um, I don't know if it was somebody. It was One of the guys is always backstage. I think it was Jason. And uh, we didn't tune him up or anything like that. But we put the fear of God in him. We did. And, and he apologized. He, he, he was apologized. Like, oh, man, I got caught up in the moment. But then later... I don't know if when the show continued, he got, I don't know what he was, what he was just trying to act tough on stage because he almost hit her again. And I don't, I don't even know if they cut that part off because then we had to really throw him off stage and then we threw him back in the green room and then the producers gave him all his bags and he left. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, that you just can't do that. I mean, I, I side with all you guys and Richard, obviously, on that. I mean, it's just something you can't do no matter what. Yeah, hey, Mark, when you ask me, because a lot of these are coming back to me right now, so the first, the second season, well, 95, 94, 95, at the end of the show, when they, when they used to bring all the guests back on for questions at the end, they, they stopped doing it after a few years. But when it first started, they said that's what they would do. The people sitting in the back were sitting on wooden stools that were heavy. No one ever thought about this. And like I said, it's a second or third season. I'm sitting right in the middle. Steve's over by Richard. I'm sitting in the middle. And uh, Danny Puhar is to my left. And I'm sitting there. And it's it's the last segment where they're, the, you know, the audience is getting in their faces and all that stuff. So it, it's getting pretty wild. Um, one of the guys in the back fought with the guy in the front row on the green chairs. He was on the, on the, on the smaller chair, picked up his stool, and whacked the guy in the back of the head. It, I saw the whole thing. It's like it happened in slow motion. This guy's head opened up, and it was blood. And if, if anybody knows how anything about head wounds, they bleed, man. They bleed. He was bleeding everywhere. Then, of course, they started fighting. The, they really didn't fight too much because the guy hit, hit in the head was probably had a concussion. He was falling all over the stage and trying to get at the guy. So we break it up. We're all like, even Richard, I, I've never seen him 
flushed, you know, flustered. Richard's like, holy shit. What, what are we going to do here? I go, hey, I'll, I'll take care of it. We had a paramedic backstage. So the paramedic closed him up the best they could. And I, I'm like, I'll take him over to Northwestern. So I take him in my personal car. I fly him because the, the paramedic did a good job with, with the cut. But we wanted to make sure he went to the emergency room. And then Richard goes, man, afterwards at night, because this was early in the day, afterwards, take him out for whatever he wants and then bring him back here at night and I'll talk to him. I being Richard. So I go, all right. So we go to the hospital. We wait there forever. Uh, he gets looked at by the doctors. They, he didn't have a concussion. The paramedics did a great job stitching him up. So basically, we just cleaned him up and brought him back. So we're sitting in Richard's office, and we're like, well, what's going to happen to me? Is this guy going to sue us? I mean, he, he had 95 stitches. I remember it was 95. He was, I remember going, oh, my God, he almost had 100 stitches in his head. 95. So I'm like, okay, you know, this guy's going to, a lawyer's going to be calling Richard. It's We're all done. You know, the show's done. Richard goes, what do you want? What What do you want? You know, because Richard's not going to get involved in saying, don't do this or don't do that. Richard's, Richard's not a dummy. So he goes, what do you want? And the guy goes, well, what I really want is I want a tattoo. And Richard goes, a tattoo? He goes, yeah, I want to put a tattoo around the wound, like I like something about Springer. I go, all right, well, we got we can't do it that day. So they put him up in the hotel because it's, it's so sensitive. So we put him up in the hotel for two days across the street, just, just delay him going home. I bring him to a tattoo parlor, and he gets a, he gets a Springer tattoo on his head, and that's all he wanted. <laughs> oh, that's nuts. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He I brought the guy to the airport. I'm like, hey, are, are you sure you're all right? He's like, man, that was, a, that was the most fun I ever had. I'm like, you got hit in the head with a stool. <laughs> but it's a course, story, you know? Of course, that was cut out. They, they couldn't show that, that and on TV. That would uh, I the show money got canceled <laughs> with that. That would have been yeah. great. And that was in the nineties. That was a, definitely in the nineties. Yeah. That, that was, I really wish I remember what year, cause they all kind of ran together. There was one year, Mark, you know, maybe Steve would know or, uh, but there was one year when it was just rocking and rolling every show. And we didn't have a break cause Richard was on a roll, man. He was on a roll and every show he was trying to outdo the previous show. And, you know, Rochelle, Rochelle Consiglio, Rochelle Wilkos, um, at this time, you know, she's on her A game too. You know, she was just under Richard at the time before she took over. Um, she was really good at what she did. So these producers were, they were working in unison, man. They, they were just kicking ass. And it was it was rough on us. I, I know Jimmy Johnson was there those years because we, we live right by each other. After we worked those two shows in one day, you know, then we got to go to work, our regular job. And I tell you, it was it was rough getting there after, you know, you're fighting for three hours with people. And also just the, um, just, you know, your adrenaline is always going too. So you're just burnt out. Then you go, you sit down for a second and you, and you, then you go to work <laughs> for eight hours right. or 10, whatever you're doing. But yeah, it was rough. So did you ever have any problems with any audience members that wanted to fight guests or, you know, you had to kick them out of the studio or any issues with the audience? Yeah, I've kicked, I remember Dave Johnson threw somebody out. Um, see, Dave, Dave was uh, on the front row, but he was also on the side a lot. So the guy that's on the side, not the front row, that's the guy that's going to throw the audience members out. And we got to watch that, though, because if the audience members are out of hand, they're not going to throw them out right away because that's good TV. Richard wants that. You know, as long as we, as long as the guy doesn't charge the stage or something like that or, or start using, you know, start swearing at every other word, they don't want that either. But if somebody's in the audience and they're causing a problem, we're not going to throw them out right away. You know, we're going to wait and we're going to see where it goes. And if they don't play the game, like a Richard will say, stop, you know, from his podium. And if the guy MFs Richard, then Richard will go look at us and go, out, And then, then we'll throw him out. But that that rarely happened. I mean, I, like I said, I was there 15 years. I, 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 I can remember, like yesterday, Dave getting pretty rough with somebody and throwing him out. I don't even know what that person did because I was I'm I'm in the front looking this way and Dave's watching the crowd, but uh, so totally no, it didn't happen that often, but it did happen. There was a clip I came across. Uh, a guy tried to run down and you got him by the shirt and just threw him down in an aisle. And then Jerry goes, "How about a hand for Jimmy?" And everybody yeah. starts, starts clapping, and then you get on the pole and did a little dance, and then like went back to your yeah. seat. That was pretty funny. Yeah. What a great job. <laughs> Yeah, tackle the guy, and I get to do a dance on a pole. <laughs> yeah, that's it's good team. And I got Jerry Springer recognizing me and telling me, "Hey, nice job." <laughs> yeah, that I think was that really guy funny. Was trying to, 
I think I caught him in the middle aisle. He was running down the stairs, and I just happened to turn and I saw him. I, I don't know where, you know if he's going after Jerry or what. I just ran. I tackled him, and uh, Richard loved it. And it wasn't planned. It was just just happened. I, I don't know what the kid was going to do. We threw him out, and we we ended up bringing him back in because he was back. He was back there apologizing, and you know we let we let him back in. Just said, hey, just don't do that again. You know. Now, amongst the guards, did everyone get along, or was there ever any like? Jealousy over who got more airtime or anything? God, no, no, um, no. We had a great group. We did. We had a we had a great group. Uh, still, like I said, Steve was Steve was obviously in charge at first, and then when Steve got pretty big, I took over after that. Uh, just not because I was any any better than anybody else. It, it was, I just happened to be the guy that was there. And Richard said, "Hey, you know, we, we need a guy to do the scheduling and everything like that." So I took over that job. But we all got along. We all, we all got along. I mean. You know, um, there was just Tony was on the show and uh, Al. They had some characters, you know. Tony was that guy that Richard would always have him take his shirt off and, and do stuff like that, you know. Um, that, but we had, we all got along. We, we, we was, and, I, and I'm happy to say there was no drama. There was no drama. It was a, it was a, it was a great job and uh, we were there to work. You know, we knew it was a great job. We knew Jerry was the, the best guy to work for. But we knew that we had to work. So, it, you know, while we're working, we're working hard. And then afterwards, we go have a drink together or if we had time or, or you know, there's a restaurant in the NBC Towers. We'd go down there just to diffuse a little bit before we went to work. But uh, we all got along real well. Well, that's that's really good to hear because sometimes in television, I mean, it's cutthroat. Um, oh. You hear about yeah. it all the time. Yeah. And as far as, you know, getting our mugs on TV, um, I, I – I don't remember that at all. You know, as soon as Pete got on, his, you know, Pete's a pretty damn good looking guy. Uh, you know, they had Pete on all the time and they had, they, they put a mic on him. So he was talking, but none of us cared. That was great. And Pete did a great job with it. And then, um, like I said, at that point, Steve was kind of off to the side a little bit. I think his career was starting to uh, take off at that, at that time. But Jason Brandsetter, same way, Jason, whenever he, he didn't talk much, but whenever he said something, it was usually really funny and he didn't mean it to be funny. He would just say something, and every, everybody would laugh. And then, you know, Richard's laughing at what what Jason said too. He was like, "Hey, you're gifted, man." <laughs> he was a comedian without even knowing it. Yeah, were there was there any camaraderie between the guards, like pulling pranks on each other and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, the biggest uh, the biggest prankster was Jimmy Johnson. You know, he would always find a way to. Uh, just to do something to make to keep out. And Terry Johnson, his brother was there too. He's not well known there. He was mostly backstage. Terry was just crazy. You know, he was just just fun to have around. So it was it was all. If Terry and Jimmy Johnson were around, you had to watch yourself because they're going to play some kind of practical practical joke on you. And we went. We were down in um, um, in Jamaica filming a show, and uh, I forget the guy's name. He had no legs. Um, Kenny Easterday. What was, what was the first thing? Kenny Easterday. Kenny, Kenny. How did I forget that? So, Kenny rubbed people the wrong way. Uh, you know, he 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 got a pretty big head for being on the show, and and and, and he got a horrible you know affliction with you know with what happened to the, to the poor guy. But he he used to rub security the wrong way. He would always say shit to us that he shouldn't have said. You know, so we pull up in in Jamaica. We were all the security guys were on a bus. A van, and it 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 was a hor. We had a horrible flight, and we had a horrible time at the at the, at the airport. Then we had a horrible drive from the airport to the hotel. It was not going well. And as soon as we walked into the hotel, there's this big pool where everyone's everybody from Springer's down there. They're all around the pool, you know, dancing and partying. And Jimmy Johnson, myself, and Terry Johnson walk in. We're not too happy yet. And then Kenny said something to Terry. That he shouldn't have said it was something smart. He was trying to be funny, and then Terry goes, "Oh yeah, you want to impress me?" And he takes Kenny and he threw him in the pool, <laughs> in the deep end. <laughs> and Kenny went right to the bottom. <laughs> me and Jimmy look, are all looking at one of the producers. Somebody jumped in and they grabbed him. I, you know, he was on the bottom. <laughs> and I walked away, and that all of a sudden now we're all in a great mood. We're all laughing. Hey, he got what he deserved. But I'm after we got away from everybody. I go to Terry. I go, "What the hell are you doing?" He's like, "I oh, fuck that guy." <laughs> oh, that's but, great. Uh, that would have been a bad start if something happened to Kenny. It would have been a real yeah. bad start. 
<laughs> would have made the show look kind of bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about those uncensored shows? Anything go crazy on those? Uh, those were those were nuts. Yeah, those were. It's Jerry Springer on steroids. That's all that was. You know, it, and you gotta you gotta remember. Um, I don't know if we, you said you talked to, to Pete. I'm sure Pete told you those censored shows were censored. I mean, there was some shit that would go on stage that it it even pushed the envelope too too far. You know, you know, I didn't think I wouldn't know what they would do until I would see the show, and they would go uncensored. I'm like uncensored. They 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 can't show what happened. So then when I would watch the, the you know the finished product, then you would see that they did censor it, but they would they would let a lot more in than usual, obviously. But um, it, it it got real crazy. You, you never knew what people were going to do. You, know, you, just, you just never knew. Everyone's from different parts of the country, different backgrounds, and everybody at, at after Springer was on for four or five years, Mark. Everyone knew Jerry Springer show. They did. You know, people would say, and I I I, I love this part because I, I I was recognized a lot for the last you know for the first 10, 15 years. I was really I was recognized wherever I went. I, I, like I said, as the other guy, they didn't know my name or anything like that, which I was cool with. But people had to go out of their way, Mark, to tell me, you worked in a Jerry Springer show? I hate that show. I never watched it. I go, okay, cool. Then they would say, well, remember the one time? Then they start talking about it. And they go, they, and I'm watching them. I'm looking at them, and they're, they're going, well, this one show. And I, I go, oh, you never watch it. Huh? You just told me about five different shows. But they wanted to make sure they said they didn't watch it. And then once they're clear, once they got that out, then they start talking about the show. And then, then inevitably they would say, you got a t-shirt I can give to my girlfriend? <laughs> I thought you hated the show. So. The biggest haters are usually the biggest fans. Secretly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, some people, you know, where they go to school, where they live, they don't want to be associated with the Jerry Springer show. So when they would meet Steve and I or me and Pete and Jason or we're out, you know, having lunch, you're always going to get that person who, oh, I hate the Jerry. That's ruining, that's ruining our culture. It's, through, you know, this and that. And then they start talking about the show, you know. My grandmother was a little bit like that. My grandpa and I would watch it. I would sneak in the in the living room and watch it with him in the afternoon after school. And she'd come in and say, "Mark, you can't watch Springer." And I say, "Oh." Crap. <laughs> so so I you know I'd wait till she went back in the kitchen. I'd go back again. But then she'd come in and she'd be like, "Well, when I came in, I saw that guy on the on the screen. Whatever happened to him?" What, what was <laughs> and I'm like, "Really? Yeah. Like, come on now, just watch." He's it. in there. Okay, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know what's crazy too, Mark, before I forget, I, I, my partner at work, uh, Scotty Rock, he was my partner at work. Him and I, we were both coppers together, drive around the same car for eight hours, best friends. I was working for Jerry Springer, and he was working for Oprah at the oh, same wow. time. That's that was amazing. nuts. So he, his, job, his job with Oprah was, his, uh, he would pick her up like at five o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, take her to the gym where she went. And then for makeup before the show. So he would do all the pre stuff. And on the show, they had their own security at Oprah Studios. But that was Scott's job for a few years. And I'm like, you know, we'd be sitting in the car. And I'm like, do you know that you and I both work on the, the two most watched shows in the whole country? Just two nobodies driving around, you know, in our Chicago police car at work. That's amazing. And who would ever knew? Who would ever yeah. unless they watched? Yeah, we were, we were laughing about that. It was pretty cool. That is really cool. The, uh, is he still in the? Is he still a police officer? Or is he retired? No, he's retired too. Him and I retired the same year, two thousand uh, two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, I noticed when the show went to Connecticut. Well, well, let me back up a little bit. I noticed that you did uh, a few episodes of Steve's show while it was still in Chicago, working security. Yeah, at <laughs> yeah. I uh, Steve, Steve, I, I made detective. I got promoted to detective um, while I was working the show. So. Um, I got promoted to detective in 97, 98. My first couple of years as a detective, um, I was obviously new. So I, I wasn't really in the thick of things. But then after that, I got real busy at work. So I started missing a lot of the shows. I couldn't, I, I'd have court, things like that in the morning. And then I started working on, uh, of course, Steve wanted me to work on his show when it first started. I did. I think it was Mike McDermott, myself, who were the first two that were working on that show. I, I, I think Pete did too. I, I can't remember. Pete and but Jason both did, yeah. I, I know definitely they both did a little bit later, but the first couple that were filmed at the NBC Towers, uh, they were rough. I, I don't know if, if you heard about that or not, but they they were tough tough to work because I think Richard was trying to find you know the right formula. And um, they didn't know if they wanted us to break the fights up or if they wanted Steve 
to, to just to be Steve, Steve, and, and him break it up. There was a lot of going back and forth. And uh, I, I worked, I, I, I probably worked about maybe about 20 shows, uh, maybe 10, 10, 20 shows. And then I went to Connecticut and I was out there for um, only the first, the first few months. And I told Rochelle, well, I was pretty close with, I told Rochelle, I said, I can't do this. Um, you know, I was so busy at work. I, it was hard to get those, th that time off. So that's why, I, that's when I had to step away. Yeah. That was actually going to be my next question because I noticed that you were on a, uh, like a few of the episodes in Connecticut and then you weren't there anymore. And I was like, well, what happened to Jimmy? You know, he's not here. <laughs> yeah. It, it was hard. It was really hard to step away. I was, I was going to step away for one season and then try to uh, manipulate my hours at work to make it work for me to go back out there. Cause Jerry wanted me to go out there too. He was, he was very loyal like that. He, he treated all of us security guys. Great. And then, you know, he knew when they made the move, it was going to be tough for us to go out there. I, I know Mike McDermott did. I think he lasted the whole time. Um, and, and I don't know how we did it. And him and Jason and Pete, that was, that was rough. Yeah. That, that, I think that was Mike hard. still does Steve's show. Yeah, I think I think he does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk about it. he's another great guy. Yeah, and, and no drama, just fun, fun. He'd run through a wall for Richard. If Richard, you know, wanted Mike to do something, do whatever you need, I'll do. You know, he was he was a great guy to work with. And then I know he hung around the Steve show, all, you know, out in Connecticut. But yeah, that, that's it, it. Hurt. And then after that, after I left in, in Connecticut, um, the, the the next season, I remember, you know, I was talking to uh, Rochelle and to Steve. You know, um, and I just said, you know, I, I just can't do it. I, uh, there's no way I can do this. So it was tough, but it was I had to move on. So did you get to know any of the uh, Connecticut guys that they hired uh, when they no. came to Connecticut? No, because when I was working there, it was still all, still all of us from Chicago. They, they didn't hire those guys yet. They, they, I'll take that back. They did hire one guy. He was working backstage, but I never really got a chance to meet him. Yeah, well, I still say the best years, in my opinion, of watching the show. Well, I love 1998. The shows from 98 seem to be the most wild that I remember seeing. And then, of course, the 2006 to 2008 seasons, okay. I think, were probably the best. And they were all still in Chicago. I mean, the show was still good when it went to Connecticut, I thought. But those Chicago shows, it's just nothing like it. Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, I, I agree. Because uh, the last year before they left, obviously, none of us, none of us thought we were leaving. So, we, you know, it wasn't like, hey, this is our last year coming up. We, di we didn't have that. You know, um, that was all behind the scenes. Uh, there, were, there were some rumors going around that, hey, um, we might be moving. And I just just shoved it off, shrugged it off. I'm like, oh, we're not going anywhere. Chicago's not going to let this show go. You know, it brings in a great crowd. It helps the restaurants out around there. And I'm like, ah, oh, Chicago, there's no way they're going to let this show go. And shows you what I know. You know, it's... we. We end up coming up. They did. They did keep it a secret. We walk into the studio one day, and um, our, our lawyer uh, Carol Carol says, uh, "Hey, uh, everyone, go to the studio. We have we have an announcement to make." And right there, we're like, "Ah, oh, the rumors are true. They are they are moving." And it's it, it was tough. There's a lot of the uh, union guys, you know, all the the, the guy, the stage hands, and the electricians, and all that, the riggers. You know, they had to. Uh, that they're not going to move, so they were losing a good gig. So it was it was sad for a lot of the guys that they lost it, lost that job. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it was. I mean, I I heard it was because of a tax incentive to go to Connecticut. That's that's what I heard. It was all because of taxes, and Illinois wouldn't budge on it. And um, you know, that's that's totally out of my lane. You know, I remember even talking to Jerry about it, and Jerry didn't even know a lot about it. You know, he's like, "Hey, that's New York." You know, I, I think it was NBC Universal own us at the time and it was all that was all corporate you know dealing with with whoever they were dealing with about the taxes so we just came in worked and left we didn't get involved in stuff like that <laughs> not that i would have understood it anyway but yeah, yeah. I, I, above the pay grade there yeah 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 but it, it was it was a shocking it was a shock when they left i didn't think i i, I mean i i didn't think they were going to leave and i also i didn't tell you when i worked that first show um you know what before it was even aired I remember telling Steve, I'm like, Steve, this is never going to last, man. People aren't going to watch this. <laughs> well, 26 years later. <laughs> and here we are now. <laughs> yeah. Talking about it. I think I, 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 think I read somewhere they did 5,000 shows. I think uh, I, that's just incredible. I mean, I remember telling my family, because when it, when it started, my family started watching it. I didn't go around telling my family I was working the Jerry Springer show. I really didn't think it was going to last. I thought I was going to be there like for, for, for a month. And then, because I knew that they lost their contract, I don't know if you knew that or not, but they were getting canceled. 
Oh, yeah, um, I did know that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Mark. The first two years, it was like a Phil Donahue show. That's what Jerry Springer wanted to do, a real talk show. But then when they got canceled, Richard Dominic, he got involved, and that's when he told you know whoever owned Springer at the time, NBC Universal, that's when Richard Dominic said, give me a little bit of time. I'll change this thing. I'll change it all. I'll change it around. And he did. The rest is history. He was brilliant. He was brilliant. I think there was a fight like on Ricky Lake or something like that or, or Geraldo. There was a fight, and it got all kinds of press. It was all over the news. It was everywhere. And I think, Richard, you know, that's a no-brainer. So those couple fights got all that attention. How about if we do that every show? You know, and, it, you know, the next thing you know, you got Jerry Springer's in a dictionary now for dysfunctional family. I mean, it just it just exploded. Yeah. It, was, it was it was an idea that Richard had, you know, and it was it was the rest is history, man. It was it was incredible. Great run. For sure. Now I was gonna add just was looking at my questions. I forgot to ask this. Did you ever get a, a bad injury working security on the show or oh yeah. Yeah, I had a couple bad I had a couple real bad ones. I got hit one time, uh not not a punch. I ran into somebody and uh I got a jolt in, in the back of my neck like a car accident. And my whole left arm went numb. I couldn't even feel it. It was just hanging there. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And I walked off the stage. And Rochelle had saw me. And it kind of freaked her out a little bit. Because I guess my whole shoulder was hanging. And I'm like, what the hell? And a paramedic came over. And it uh, it seemed like a half hour. But it was probably about three minutes. And all of a sudden, I felt it coming back in my arm. It was just like a, a real bad uh, a neck. You took something in my neck. And my arm went went went, went numb. Uh, I've, I've had countless... Countless bloody noses um, that you get hit by accident, by elbows, things like that. But uh, n never anything broken. Um, I've, uh, but the worst injury was the neck with my arm because for a, for a couple seconds I thought, oh my god, I, you know, am, am I going to lose the, you know, lose my left arm? You know, what the hell's going on? But uh, so many other guys got hurt too. I, I know, I know, Pete got hurt a couple times with his neck or back. He had he had some injuries, and uh, but it was. It's not, it wasn't an easy job. <laughs> right. Not for the faint of heart. I mean, yeah. and definitely like when I was a kid, I was like, oh, I want to do that when I grow up. And, you know, my family's yeah. like, yeah, right. You're not doing that. And I was like, yeah, yeah I really want to. Like, looks like fun. Yeah. So I think we had more, we had more fights. I, I don't know who coined the phrase, but we had more fights than Patrick Swayze had in Roadhouse. Yeah. You know, I would say he so. only fights, he only fights once a night. We got eight fights a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take a note, Patrick. Yeah. 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 Um, so I want to talk a little bit about your appearance on Family Feud with Jerry. Oh. The last times you all got together, yeah, that was great. That was great. We we were up. We were on Family Feud. Um, myself, Jason, and Todd, and then obviously Jerry. And um, you know, I, I don't watch a lot of daytime TV, but everybody knows Family Feud. You know, um, I, I remember it from years ago watching. You know, watching it when I was in high school, and. Um, I never thought I would be on Family Feud, so it was a blast. It really was. It was a lot of fun. We met the Doug Flutie, him and his family. That's who we played against. Doug Flutie is just a gentleman. His gentleman and his kids and his wife, they were just beautiful people. It was really cool. It was a great experience. Did your family get to sit in the audience during the taping? No. No, I just went out there myself. Okay. Yeah, went out there myself. Uh, everybody was watching back home when, when it aired. It aired. Uh, I don't know, just a few days later it aired. But um it was, I was a little nervous. Uh, you know, everybody wanted to go up to the, you know, to the, when you have the guest, the first, the, up at the desk, you know, the, the front, and everyone's saying they want to do it. And I'm like, one person doesn't do it. And I'm like, well, I won't do it then. And they were all happy because then the rest of them all got to go up there. But um, it was cool. And then you're, you're starting to worry, like, when, you know, when he's standing in front of you asking you a question, <laughs> what if yeah. you don't know it? You know, What's the answer? Yeah. Like, yeah, uh, you, know, you freeze up or something like that. But it was a lot of fun. I'm glad Jerry asked me. It really was because it, it, it was only me and uh, me and Jason, and definitely there's six other guys he could have he could have asked. But I was uh, I was really happy he asked me. Well, I think it was just the right amount. Just throw Pete up there, and you would have had the the dream. Yeah, I I think if I, I think they missed the boat, if they would have had Pete on there uh, between Pete and Jason, those two East Siders, East Siders Chicago guys. Uh, you know their their sense of humor is 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 priceless. <laughs> yeah, Pete. When we did our interview, he was cracking jokes left and right, telling me these stories that I was like, "You got to be kidding!" But it was great. Yeah. Oh. Well, I was. I, I got to watch that because I I was uh, you know I, I spent a lot of time with Pete <laughs> before the show and after the show, and uh, you know you you would think with a guy that big and and 
and and and tough and tough as he is, um, trouble finds him, man. You know, he doesn't look for it. He never looks for it. I know that for a fact. But uh, trouble seems to find him, <laughs> and he's not going to back away from too much. You know. Yeah. You know. So he's he's you know, told me about a couple of scraps he's been in. So yeah, I uh, believe. Yeah, he's been a lot of. He's he's a hell of a policeman too. He really was. I, I had a lot of respect for him as a copper. I was sorry to hear about you know what made him retire. I was really sad to hear that. Terrible. Yeah, getting shot like that and then losing the uh, his left arm. Uh, losing he had nerve damage, I believe. Uh, that was real sad. I know he did. I know he wanted to go a few more years. I think he wanted to go until he was fifty, and uh, that kind of you know put a uh, wrench in his plans, um, but. Uh, you know, you wouldn't know it by talking to him. Though. He 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 came back real tough, and he, he's the last guy in the world that's going to feel sorry for himself. And uh, his wife is uh, Jess; she's a sweetheart, and she's not going to let him feel sorry for himself either. So those two are are, are they're a great couple, and uh, he's down in Maui right now. So that's why he's always smiling. <laughs> yeah, that's what he told me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, besides yeah. Pete and Jason, I mean, do you still keep in touch with uh, any of the other security guys or Richard? Uh, Richard, I, I, I kept in touch with for, for years until about six months ago, I kind of lost touch with him. Uh, nothing happened or anything like that. He just, he's got his life going on. I got grandkids, grandchildren now, and it just, life happens. Um, I, but I enjoyed, you know, meeting with him and talking with him. I went and had lunch, with, lunch with him a few times. Um, Jerry, when he would come to Chicago, he would always call me and, um, it was always last minute. And I, I would like somewhere else and I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to meet with them that always I'm like Jerry you have the worst timing just how about giving me a day notice that I'll make sure I'm there the next day but it was usually the last minute call it because he didn't want to Jerry was so nice he never wanted to put me out he just he didn't want to make have me make me you know cancel something to have lunch with him it was like if you're available come on you know like kind of like that so obviously a few times I was able to have lunch with Jerry, which, which was great. Uh, cause I would see he still, he still came to Chicago because his daughter lived here in, in, in Evanston. So I'll see but as far as the security guys, Mark, uh, Jimmy Johnson and Terry Johnson live right by me. So I see them all the time. Uh, I'll talk to Mike McDermott every once in a while on the phone, Dave Johnson, I'm sorry, Dave Johnson. Um, I'll talk to him on the phone. Um, and I, I'll see Dave a few times during the year or two, but, um, we do something with this right here, Mark. I gotta. This is very important. This is uh, work. <laughs> no problem. Let me just check off here real quick. Did you? Uh, were you able to talk to Dave at all, Mark? No, I've still got a few guys to talk to. So if you ever talk to these guys and they they want to do this or interested, please uh, give them my email and uh, we'll set something up. I will. Dave would. Dave would be great. Dave's got a. He's a real funny guy. Great. Great personality. Uh, all full of life, man. He's good. He, yeah, I, Dave. I Dave. Dave Mike McDermott. Him. Andrew Riley. Those are the ones I haven't done yet. Oh, I, I. I'm sorry. I see Andrew all the time. Yeah, I see Andrew. He's a great kid too. Yeah, Rocky. That's what we call him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. Harry Anderson's another one. I hadn't spoken with him yet. Uh, Terry's another guy. He was, he was Richard's friend. Richard brought him aboard and uh, oh, wow. we weren't really, we weren't really sure how to take Terry at first because he wasn't one of the coppers, you know, and Terry fit in right away. That's what I'm saying. When you asked about us as a group, uh, you know, Terry, Terry comes in, Richard said, Hey, this is my guy. You, you guys are going to like him. So, all right. You know, it, you know, a bunch of coppers are always, you know, quizzical about people, you know, there's who was, you know, you don't trust somebody until you, until you get to know them a little bit and, like I said, Terry, within the first two shows, he was one of us. So it was great. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, how about Todd? You ever talk to Todd? I, no, no. And it's crazy, too, because see, for 15 years, I was with him all the time. We traveled together. Did everything. Once once he went to Connecticut, you know, every, just kind of went, went, went our own way. Uh, who I talked to the most was Linda Sheffern. I still talk to Linda. I love that lady. Yeah, I would. I keep in touch with her. Yeah, I'm thinking about reaching out to her and uh, you know just talking a little bit about Jerry and working with Jerry all those years. I think that would be a good talk as well. Nobody, I think, between myself uh, with Jerry as much as I was, but nobody knows Jerry better than Richard Dominic and Linda because they spent. I mean, like when all of us would leave at night, 
they they were together for hours and hours and hours putting things together and making it all work. You know, so Linda was right there with Jerry and Richard Dominic and Jerry just spent, you know, countless hours together trying, you know, for the show, trying to make it better. And so, um, yeah, Linda, Linda's uh, Linda's very Linda was very good for Jerry. She's an excellent, excellent publicist. Excellent. She actually shares a lot of the videos that I post. Like I'll post them and she'll share them to her uh, her page or her page that she has for her, uh, like the publicist page. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. So, so I really enjoy, uh, you know, seeing the people that knew Jerry personally, because I only met him the one time at the show just as an audience member. But it's great seeing the people that actually knew him and, you know, coming forward and appreciating liking the page. Yeah, it's real good. yeah, 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 it's... Like I said, I, I I I went through all those years with him, and I, I worked in security for him and going all these different events. I never had one issue with a person. I'm, and I'm talking when we were out of town, going to all these events in, in restaurants, wherever we were. People just loved him, man. They really did. You know, the only time Jerry didn't want he wanted his peace and quiet was when he was eating. That was it. He just he he wanted me to keep people away. But if, if before he ate or after he ate, if somebody came up. Jerry always had time for him, you know. He was kind of funny too because he always had the same. He only had about five or six different comebacks for people, and I was with him so often I can almost predict what he's going to say to people. <laughs> you know, so uh, it was it was it was a great. And I look at it like someone like yourself. You're nice enough to call me to talk to me, um, and I just can't. Sometimes I I close my eyes and I just can't believe that that I did that for all those years, and I've been gone for all these years. Now Jerry's passed away and. And that show still lives on, man. People love it. People love it. Yeah, me for sure. Definitely. And he, he will always live on. I mean, he's never yeah. for years. Yeah, it was brilliant. Brilliant idea by Richard. <laughs> yeah. Well, I really appreciate you doing this. I, I can't thank you enough. This has been a great talk. And sure. um, uh, if you don't mind just hanging on, I'm going to stop the recording. You can just yeah, hang sure. on about five extra minutes. I just want to talk about some stuff not related. Okay. And, uh, We'll close it out here. Thanks again. All right, brother. Thanks for having me, Mark. Thank you.